Seeking the Wise Whys. With Aaron and Alexander discussing the just philosophy. Covering self-development, emotional processing, conscious relationships, and five levels of overall wellness. Welcome to the Wise Wise podcast. I am Aaron, and along for the ride in this virtual studio is the one and only Alexander. Hello, beautiful people. Uh, so good to be with Aaron here and sharing with you guys. So let's get into an interesting subject. What's it going to be? Yeah. So today we're going to do like a little conversation about uh, suffering. And uh, suffering is a topic that is mostly known and um, for with you know people around doing this work around this uh who have dabbled in like spirituality and different religions will know that uh that the buddhist or buddhism has said that life is suffering and i know early on when i met you alexander uh we had had this discussion i might have been in a podcast it might have been in a personal conversation but you brought up to me that would you rather want the same suffering over an extended period of time or would you rather have different sufferings over an extended period of time? And that's kind of always sat with me. And I've always brought that in from time to time and mentioned it to people because to me, different sufferings seems more exciting, more and more entertaining. And, and you're not like stuck in the constant burning of, I mean, it just like, when I when I hear same same suffering, it reminds me of like hell. You know, if if for the Christians out there, shout out to you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but different suffering seems more dynamic, and if you have different sufferings, to me that means you're kind of solving or relieving some of them, but you're just up against another one. And so, yeah, I wanted to start the conversation out off there with that kind of um, little thing that you would throw at me when we would talk about suffering. Yes, and this was um, something that came clear as kind of like an epiphany when I was studying uh, Buddhism uh, over 20-some years ago, and along with all other religions and as many philosophies as I could get my eyes and mind on. And when I come across that that teaching of the Buddha that, that everything is, that life is suffering, and then what most people didn't understand about that is that you can either learn from your suffering and move past that, and then another type of suffering will show up, or you can choose not to learn and just pretty much be stuck in the same type of suffering over and over and over. And so I got it conceptually, but then when I went through my healing crisis um, after Sherry passed and dealt with unexplained pains for approximately five years, my pains would literally travel in my body and like go to like the middle of my back. And then it would uh, come across like over up under my spleen. And sometimes it would last for hours. Sometimes this would last for days, weeks, months even. And so when I felt like I really got the true understanding of that teaching was every time the, the pain would move and shift to another area of my body, it would be this overwhelming sense of relief and that I could take a deep breath and I could accept, okay, I'm ready for this challenge because it's at least different than that, that other challenge. Now, a big part of me feels like that part of that moving around and the train, the pain traveling, and many people have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia that's listening here and you know, that still kind of resonates as we don't really know what that is. Uh, we're going to go through different types of drugs to see if something will, will help it. But when I was working on myself and doing my self-development through that and associating my pains with emotions and areas of the bodies and the chakra system and all the stuff that I do in my profession now, uh, when I would change my emotional attachment and my mental projection of it, it would very much seem like then it could leave that spot and, and go somewhere else. And when you think of, there's this term called Chinese torture, and they, it's just a drop of water that they have, you know, on somebody's forehead, and they can't move out of that position. 
that eventually that drop of water will turn into a hammer. And so one of the main reasons that that I find this interesting to talk about is that people will get stuck in their patterns of suffering in relationships with their family, with themselves. And see, they will create the same type of suffering over and over because they get used to it. And they get to a point to where, whether it's through detachment or whatever it is, they get to a point to where they almost accept it as a new part of reality. And so this is many times the issue with people not being able to move on from a certain type of relationship is that they they know they're suffering, but they're at least used to it. And the people that are involved are consistent in uh, projecting it or playing a role in it. And so, see, for many people, that suffering is worth not going through the fear of what other type of suffering may I step into if I make my life better. And so we just wanted to kind of have this loose conversation around this because, again, suffering doesn't have to seem as negative as most people when they hear that, that word. It can have such a negative connotation to it. We want to lighten it just a little bit here in this conversation to just realize that Whatever you feel like you're suffering through or dealing with, it does have a message. And when you get that message and you're able to process it on all five of the levels, again, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the energetic, and the physical, when you're able to process that, then I've proven time after time that these pains, these discomforts, this suffering can be resolved. But many of our pains, from my own experience, do hang out in the energetic and the emotional levels. And people associate pain and suffering many times with the physical or the mental, one of those two. And we're bringing a flashlight in here to shine that if you work on these types of suffering, whether it is mental or physical or both possibly, and you work on it on the emotional release side of processing the emotions. See, when we process or we, we choose to look at something differently, it actually changes the literal vibration of our being, which can help move something through to process. So that's just where I wanted to, to start, and I'm looking so forward to, to little snippets that you have to, to ask and to share um, where suffering is in, in your view. Woo! You just uh, <laughs> you just Laid talked about a lot there. <laughs> There's a lot. I just wrote a half page notes. Um, I thought it was really interesting that you mentioned the fear of the unknown, where people will cling to their suffering because of the fear of the unknown is is to them worse than his suffering. I thought that yes. was a very interesting point. I don't know if you have anything more to add to that before we move on, but I just wanted to highlight that because that was something I never I never really contemplated on. Yeah, so like even somebody that's in a negative relationship, um, see, they learn how to separate themselves from that person or from the attack. Normally, it's through detachment. And so, see, they feel like they're they're managing that suffering to where... If they leave that person and they go and they spend some time, hopefully alone, to process that relationship before getting in another one is ideal. Very rarely practiced, but it is ideal. That they don't have any sense of what type of suffering, whether that's loneliness or whatever, will come up. So they don't feel like they're prepared to deal with that. So many people will stay at jobs, stay in relationships, stay in situations that they know is not healthy for them because of this fear of the unknown. And see, here's where I want to bring in that as children, most, the majority of children are excited about the unknown. But we were trained becoming adults to fear the unknown. And this is where our culture got into plan for your future, uh, save for your retirement, get your life insurance, health insurance, all this stuff that is um, potentially part of the fear that's being created. And so, so I think that that's uh, just a little highlight on what you just pointed out is that 
that pay attention to yourself and the people around you that choose the same type of suffering. And when you ask them why, many times they don't have an answer because most people just hasn't considered that they're actually scared of the unknown. And so I will stay in this suffering and deal with this because the unknown is more fearful. Yeah, and it may even be that they're afraid of being alone. So there may be that too, but isn't there saying, and I don't know if I'm using the right word here, but the devil that you know is better than the devil that you don't, or I don't, it may not be devil, but there's something kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure exactly the phrase you're talking about, but it, it can ring true in this is that, you know, whether it's the term suffering or, or the devil, or I like to use the word growth, um, you know, those are very, all very challenging for people to lean into the friction, we call it. And again, leaning into the friction does not mean that you involve yourself in external friction, but it means that you work with what you are resisting to stop the resistance. That's the main thing, because when we resist things, it challenges our energetic field. And when we challenge that energetic field, it can change the way that we're looking or thinking about something. And so it can really start a downward spiral very, very quickly. And so, um, so that is one of our phrases in this philosophy is lean into the friction. But uh, as we discussed before we got on air, I do agree with you that, that many people have misconstrued that. And it's not that you just go looking for friction to lean into. It's just that whenever it shows up within yourself, uh, that's a good idea to work with some processing and changing of perception um, so that you're not depleting uh, the other four of those levels that we mentioned earlier. Or like in this case, when you were talking about uh, a relationship and suffering in that. So I feel like and maybe you can expand upon this. If you're in a relationship where you're suffering an extreme amount and a, a lot of that suffering could be internal because maybe they're showing you a lot of your crap like in, intensely. So obviously you want to lean into to that, but if it's if it's too much, it's going to over, you know, you're going to be overcome with all that. So how does how does somebody balance that if, you know, if we're talking about leaning into the friction is the internal work, but they're in a relationship where they it's just it's just too much. Mm -hmm. Um where is that line where the you know there's too much <laughs> there's too much internal friction yes and many times you know that line is hard to point out because uh, often it's the the person that doesn't necessarily even consider that they have options uh, first of all and and whether this is a marriage that they're in and they you know they're very religious and they feel like they've got to stay in that marriage forever or whether it's a job and they're scared that they can't find another job, you know, with the same amount of money. See, the consistency here is fear. There's fear involved. And when we realize that sometimes we will put up with external suffering or external friction so that we don't have to deal with that internal fear. And many times people that are suffering were justified will say, well, that's just the way that he is or that's just the way that uh, she talks. You know, and see, that's a that's a form of detachment many times when people are justifying other people's external efforts. And that creates a lot of communication obstacles because the more someone detaches from anything, the more obstacles for conscious communication is going to be there. And so so this idea of whatever the reason for the person staying in the situation you know, typically it is justified and the internal work and working with self-development is making sure and clearing up any areas where we're justifying things and not stepping into an opportunity for growth. And again, there's very little growth that happens without resistance. I mean, that's a big part of growth is recognizing the resistance and then leaning into that resistance, so to say. And choosing a different kind of suffering, because if we're choosing different kinds of suffering, see, we're more likely to be growing. If we're just accepting the same type of suffering over and over, see, most people get into justifying, and there's very little growth that happens in justification. 
So this does come down, I feel like, to uh, a discipline and structure situation that and why I talk about and in many of our episodes, my five levels practice of practicing these five levels every morning and see, I have a general idea and what works for me is that if I do something first in my day that I know is good for me, that I have resistance to, then see, I'm going through the process of processing that resistance, like physically working out. I don't necessarily want to do that every morning, but I do it typically six out of seven days a week. And part of me working with that resistance is to show every level of my being that when resistance shows up, this is what we do. We work through it on all five of these levels. So that's why I have a suggestion to people that, you know, whatever is most challenging for you that is good for you, attempt to do that first thing in your morning to start your day. Because when you overcome that first obstacle, you feel a sense of of processing, a sense of growth, a sense of patting yourself on the back. And then whatever resistance shows up through the through the rest of the day, you're more prepared to deal with it because you've already processed resistance. So this is why I feel like the structure and discipline is so useful to people that feel that they're suffering and that can help right after admitting to yourself that you're allowing and you're partaking in this suffering because of more than likely an internal fear of you don't know what type of suffering the change is going to bring. Yeah, and I think if you are experiencing the same suffering, that is, <laughs> that's an indication that you're not growing, that you're not facing it, and it is something to go deeper um, and you know look at where that specific vibration is coming in throughout your life. It may not be, and it may not show up the same way but, you know, one of, the, one of the typical ways this shows up is the people that you attract in with relationships or, or friendships or, or the, you know, the people around you that, that you can identify, oh, that's, you know, this, I feel the same way or this is like this person is just like the last person. But I did want to bring up, like, what is suffering? Because it does seem so deep and awful. <laughs> that word <laughs> has those connotations. It seems like to me, my, my association with that is like somebody who's in horrible pain and suffering is probably something that I've rarely ever experienced when we're just talking about the word and my association with it. But I think in this way, when the Buddhists were saying life is suffering, they're talking about just struggle, you know, challenge um, on that level. Uh, do you want to bring in anything on that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as we... As we've done in over 150 episodes of this podcast, we we do break down words and their meanings, um, not to necessarily change them for everybody on the planet, but for a deeper understanding. And some people, when they hear suffering, it gives a connotation that it, it can't be helped. Um, so when somebody is physically suffering, you know, with some type of ailment, um, See, many times people won't go to the next step to go, well, because I did this pattern for so many years of eating this food or thinking this way or whatever, they don't really put into account that this is the accumulation and the result of these poor practices. Many people in our culture look at it from more of a pity standpoint. Oh, it's so sad that they, you know, have this type of illness or this type of cancer or whatever it is. And compassion is a beautiful thing and empathy is a beautiful thing. But for ourselves and for our listeners, I want you to always be willing to go through those five different levels and realize that if the physical body is experiencing something, there is also uh, a spiritual, an energetic, uh, an emotional, and a mental connection to that that physical ailment and this is what how people from my view get out of suffering is by seeing the deeper measure of it rather than any type of victim and, and as soon as somebody goes into victim mentality the suffering is endless when they think that god the universe the world their family or whatever is doing this stuff to them instead of for them and we, we talk about people playing roles consistently on this on this podcast. And see, these people are just playing roles 
in, in a consistent way to attempt to help the person to see that consistency, to work on it on these other levels that we're talking about, to learn to process it. And we've told, I've told many stories in the past of how me adjusting the way that I approach a person or situation, being able to adjust energetically the way that that person or situation affects me. And so uh, we are very powerful in how our mind looks at something, energy follows that. And so to realize that, again, for most people that are new to the podcast or maybe been listening for a while, to realize that emotions are an option is that's another mind-blowing thing for most people. They feel like the emotions just happen to them. And, you know, here's where we, uh, one of our pillars is um, emotional accountability and responsibility is that like whatever you experience, you don't have to project that on to someone else is that responsibility. And any suffering that you're going through, to be able to take the time to get into some stillness and reflect back on what message does this have to give or what patterns do I need to break to change this suffering? is very useful um, in what what I do the majority probably with my private clientele is helping them to to see what these connections are and so that they can do a different process to have a different outcome. Yeah, I feel like the level of suffering that you will have in your suffering is directly related to your perspective on what suffering is. So if you (laughs) if you feel like it's it's a horrible thing that just happens to you and there's nothing you can do about it, then I feel like your suffering is going to be way deeper than somebody who, like you said, um, if, if you have that perspective of life is happening for you versus to you and that these are just lessons, like in my perspective, the universe will keep giving me hints on where I need to make an adjustment. And at some point it's going to get into suffering. It's going to turn into suffering. And if I still ignore it, then it's going to be, like a car accident or something like that, where um, I have no choice at that at that point. So yeah. it does benefit us to tap into that subtle energy and pick up on these little little things before it has to turn into suffering. So just for instance, um, in the Destiny card system, like we were just talking about before this podcast, we were talking about you know our our, our different health routines and. I have a five of spades in my Pluto period in in the Destiny card birth card yearly chart that you can get from Alexander. Um, uh, I know if if you're not familiar with that, we do have some episodes on the Destiny card. That's one of the it's one of these systems that we use for our energetic designs and for seeing what kind of astrological influences are going to be happening within our birth year, mm-hmm. but. The five of spades in the Pluto, it, the Pluto is kind of like your work card for the year. So my work right. is to kind of reflect on and make changes uh, in relation to my health or I think even business. And I've already been experiencing that. You know, you can go back a few episodes that we've talked about this this influence in my life. And just, you know, part of the conversation with Alexander before we went live was talking about this stuff and making changes. And and so now that I'm conscious about, okay, this energy is is happening in my life. So now I'm going to be more tuned into anywhere in my life where messages are coming in about health-related issues or items or products or or just even different things that people are saying to me. I'm going to be a little more heightened on that because that influence is in my life right now. Yes. And you know, fives, the number five, this is based off of over 10,000-year-old Egyptian numerology. And and so fives are carry the most restless energy, which restless energy means there's a necessity for change. And then spades cover your work, your health, and uh, your home, um, so to say. And so, so when a person has this as a, a yearly influence, like throughout the whole year, because some influences only last approximately 52 days or so, this is a, a whole year long, then it behooves us to, or you in this situation, to look at those three areas. And it's really a simple task to merely ask in whether it's your health or your job or your home, 
and just uh, to inquire and say, what have I been knowing that I need to do that I haven't put into action yet? And that is why that five brings a restless energy, because you're not going to be content if you continue to do the same things that you've been doing. And the hope is that for that to be felt as a a universal support, uh, a subtle energy support that, hey, you've got everything that you need this year to make these shifts. And instead of seeking out uh, complete um, contentment and peacefulness, this is the year to implement changes. And so, um, so we did have a nice conversation before we actually hit the record button. And, and that's what we were touching on is just these different aspects of things that Aaron's uh, adjusting and things that I'm adjusting in our individual lives and where we're looking to get more on the same page. And so, uh, so I think that that, that information can be very useful, um, because it can give you an insight of once again, what the influences are. It's not a, this is definitely going to happen, uh, type of thing, but it is just showing that that's what the universe is supporting. And, um, you know, and there's been, we've had many discussions around those three subjects, you know, you're halfway through your year or or close to it and you've made some adjustments. And at the same time, there are still things that you and I both see that we can implement at a, at a deeper level. And those are the conversations that I enjoy having so much. And we're going to be bringing more and more of those onto the podcast eventually as well. Yeah. And basically it's saying there's, this is a, a year of growth in those areas for me. Or, or friction, which can yield growth. But if I resist that, then I'm going to be creating suffering. So you can see how just that perspective change of, oh, here are these energies. Now I can take advantage and proactively do things to burn off that, that influence energy, or I can sit around and not want to make changes and it's just going to happen anyway. So, so you're not really escaping this, but you right. can, you can... I don't want to say avoid your suffering, but you can, it's just, everything is just energy. So you're, you're putting the energy in before it has to come to you yeah, in, in a sort of way. You're basically working with it rather than against it. And see, even, I mean, there's been plenty of people even beyond me that has worked with pain and, and there's an acceptance that you can get to in pain to where it, can seem like it it disappears and this is something i've surely gone through in in my seven year healing crisis that i went through and learning you know my chest pain that was excruciating was connected to frustration and then it took me 2 years to learn how to live my life outside of frustration but my chest pain went away to where some people once they get chest pains or heart palpitations they're on medications for you know their whole life And the main reason is they're not processing that. And of course, I'd gone through a major loss. So with my wife passing and uh, started a a new career simultaneously, and it was just too much for a human being. And, and so, but I learned so much through that. And, and this is something that's very challenging to get our culture to work with because most of our culture wants to run from pain. And I had a wonderful teacher, Sam, that taught me that If you don't ever run from pain, you will get the message. And as soon as you start masking the pain, uh, it's very hard to go back into wanting to learn that lesson. And so by no means are are we advocating people to just suffer for no reason, but we're hopefully given some incentive to see that there is a usefulness to this so-called suffering and that if you change your perception of it, and see it as an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to release uh, something, um, then it can be a very useful tool. So uh, suffering the way that I feel like uh, the Buddha was talking about it, he wasn't talking about it in a, a negative way. It's just a choice that you can either have this suffering or different suffering. And that's all we're kind of bringing to light here is how to shift whatever suffering it is into to instead of it being done to you that it's being done for you and you're taking the time to work it out on all five of these levels as to what the process is to to work with and if you have questions then yes reach out personally we can do um, in-person sessions or um, over zoom or call 
So there's many options, and I really that's one of my favorite things in my private practice to do is help people dissect what these issues are. And the most important thing is what to initiate as the shift or the change to assist this suffering rather than just suffering. Yeah, I wanted to bring up, um, as we close this episode, I wanted to bring up uh, an experience that I've had that I, I don't think I've shared. I've shared a little bit with you, but when you talked about the five of spades being about the home too, and of course, like I had that that fire that we I briefly talked about that kind of you know rattled like my home area. So you know about that one of my cats has been peeing outside the box, and obviously that's her trying to tell me something, and I I kind of. Uh, told you that I feel like I've, I've saw what that issue was, but that was kind of like a direct assault on my home. You know, when you have a, a cat peeing outside the box and, and you, you smell where it is and then you have to clean it up and it, and it was like a constant thing. But I also had, and this happened last year too, just the nature of the weather here and and wa- I wanting to keep my windows open, I had kind of like some, you know, gnats. I had like a gnat invasion. And those are, you know, it's pretty easy to take care of. I just put a little apple cider vinegar and create like a gnat trap. And they all go in there and you trap them. And, you know, they only last a couple days. Mm-hmm. So I was able to withstand that. Then I had some like, you know, small ants come in mm-hmm. around the same area, like right around my sink. So I've had three things kind of come into my home where I felt like my home was being invaded, yeah. where it took away from my comfort, from me being able to just relax here. And so I wanted to bring that up because I we haven't talked about this, and this is something that I wanted to ask you about, where because I'm in that five of spades, Pluto, it I feel like it has to do with that. What would, you know, if if I was, you know, in a consultation with you, you know, what would you kind of tell me that maybe what is the message that um, is trying to be sent to me or what should I look into in my life? Right off the top of my head, the very first thing I would say to investigate, and again, here's where we suggest being the investigator rather than the judge, is investigating anywhere in your home life that you're not keeping it as organized or clean as you would really prefer. And that that these could be little nudges trying to help you to get your environment at, a, at the level that you really want it. See, again, this isn't something outside the stretch of something that you don't want. Many times these messages are things that we do yearn for, but we're not putting into practice uh, what we need to do to bring that yearning to fruition. So this is by no means, I know that you're a, a clean person and like your environment's clean and that, so it's not a judgment that uh, your heart, house is so dirty, but that would be the first thing is just from your own reflection to look, just look around your home and say, is this area as clean and as organized as I really prefer? And if not, then yeah, maybe if I do that, then these n- nuisances won't yeah. continue showing up. So how do you resonate? Or, or, with just or that? maybe I'm not, I'm not making it a priority. Maybe other things have pulled me kind of away from that. And That's I it. do feel like that. And, and even if you kind of think about like your thoughts, create your reality. Like if I do feel like that, and I do, I do feel like I haven't dedicated enough energy to that recently that that is kind of something that's in the back of my mind and that I could have created this in response to that or attracted it, you know, if you want to get into that language. But because because it's a resistance or it's something that's on my mind, that's a frictional thing. Yeah, and, and see, I want to relate this to like working out or exercise. Many times people will talk about that they're going to start a New Year's resolution or something like that, and they'll set this date in the future of when this date comes, I'm going to start working out or I'm going to eat differently or that kind of thing. And then, see, if the person... If the concept of it is more important to them than the actuality, then see, the closer that that comes to that date, the more likely they are to injure themselves, to say, see, I was looking so forward to working out, and then I sprained my ankle or whatever. I've heard this so many times from so many people, because that's truly showing where their interest is at, is that they enjoy talking about doing that, but when it comes down to the structure and discipline of it, they really didn't want to do it. So this is where we call, we call it that we can fool ourselves very easily. And we just put out an episode recently about how do we fool ourselves. 
And this happens all the time that people will have a good concept, but truly not the willingness and the desire to truly move forward. So they self-sabotage. And then many of them use it as an excuse. And then many times people around them will accept that excuse and even support it um, because they want to be supported when they don't follow through with something. So see, it can be a very culturally supported situation to not follow through with the things that you know that you need to do because it doesn't resonate with what you want to do. And those are two big differences between what we need and what we want. Yeah, we've even talked about when you are going to make a change, you will face obstacles within that. And so if if you really want to make that change, you will put enough willpower in to push through those to tell the universe that, no, I'm serious about this. Yeah. Or if you give up so easily, then you weren't serious. Yeah, and we, you know, we suggest that, that when you do change an intention, to prepare for three obstacles right away. And if you persevere through those three obstacles, then many times life kind of lightens up and supports you more in that. But see, some people are just looking for the first obstacle to be big enough that they, they're not pushing through and then that becomes an excuse or justification. And that same cycle will, will just keep going. So I think this is a that was a great example that you brought up and that we expanded into. And most everyone experiences some type of self-delusion in this way. Um, instead of just saying something like, you know what, I know I need to start working out more, but I'm really not there yet. I'm really not at a place to where I can hold myself accountable for that. See, I'd rather hear somebody do that complete uh, sharing than just talk about what they know they need to be doing because at least it's revealing their honesty and where they see their self is at. And, and to me, that gives a little bit more incentive to be able to push through that and then yeah, truly dedicate yourself to that change eventually and effective, um, affect change in a great way. Yeah, so if you are interested in a consultation with Alexander yeah, or a Destiny card report, reading, get your human design, all these things we talk about in previous episodes, uh, they help you to understand more about you and how you relate to energy. Uh, you can reach out to him at alexander at thejustphilosophy.com. You can also uh, visit his website where he has more offerings there. And of course, the wisewisepodcast.com website. Uh, but we really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and uh, listening to us today on suffering. We hope you can change your perspective on suffering and live a more fruitful life. Lean into that friction, beautiful people, then in internal friction. Make love with it. Much love. Appreciate way. you guys. Thank you for listening to this free version of the Wise Wise podcast. To hear the complete conversation and go deeper into the application of the tools and techniques of the Just Philosophy, head on over to wisewisepodcast.com and become a premium member. You'll get to hear all of our complete conversations, including the complete episodes of our Inward Journey story series and our entire back catalog, and continue your self-development journey with us. We honor your dedication to self-growth, overall wellness, and continuing to ask the wise wise. And remember, gradual changes over long periods of time equals lasting results. Continue on your self-growth journey by visiting thejustphilosophy.com where you are able to connect personally by booking a private consultation with Alexander in person, by phone, or Zoom. Uncover your authentic self more easily with a human design or destiny card consultation. Here you will gain information about your energetic makeup, personality, and your higher self, as well as navigating your way through your relationships. There are also multiple types of reports available for purchase that help you gain insight into your career, relationships, and opportunities for self-growth. The site also allows you to view a calendar of Alexander's live performances and class schedule, peruse other products such as shirts, CDs, and finally, the revolutionary VibroTune vibrational sound therapy tables. These Contoured therapy tables allow you to bathe in a vibrational sonic bath of frequencies 
bringing you into alignment on all levels. You will be feeling and hearing calming music synced through vibration and frequency. So again, you can grab all this goodness at thejustphilosophy.com, T-H-E-J-U-S-T-P-H-I-L-O-S-O-P-H-Y.com. The Just Philosophy, as discussed in this podcast, has been developed by Alexander over the last 25 years in his personal studies, private practice, and professional environment. The information discussed is intended for educational purposes only and is not meant as a replacement for conventional medicine. Just remember, knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. Seek the wise. We want to thank you for working on you. Keep shining your light and refining your vibe.